This video will talk about multiple linear regression. We'll talk about the benefits of using multiple variables to estimate the value of a response variable of interest. We'll talk about the difference between the F-test in simple linear regression and the F-test in multiple linear regression. And we'll talk about how we interpret our output from multiple linear regression. First, we'll start with a gentle introduction to multiple linear regression. So before we start, let's take a step back. Up to this point, we've considered in detail the linear regression model. And we've talked about how the mean response is related to a single explanatory variable. We can conduct hypothesis tests and calculate confidence intervals on the intercept and slope, beta 0 and beta 1. We can use diagnostic plots to test the assumptions of using regression. But what if we have more than one independent variable? That is, we have beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, up to beta n. Well, multiple linear regression is going to allow us to have more than just one variable. And so here's the model for multiple linear regression. We have some value yi hat, and we're interested in predicting it. So we have beta 0, our slope, beta 1 times x, or sorry, beta 0, our intercept, plus beta 1 times x, where beta 1 is our slope, and x is our independent variable of interest. But we can have multiple values of beta. We can have up to p different values for beta, or we might have p different independent variables. And so the slopes for each independent variable are represented by beta sub p. And then the value of the kth independent variable is represented by x sub ip. And so this will be important because we know that there are lots of problems in statistics where having more than one variable is going to help us get a better understanding and a better prediction of some response that we're interested in. And just like we use least squares for simple linear regression, we're going to use the concepts of least squares to minimize the residual sums of squares for multiple linear regression. So what are some of the benefits of multiple regression? Well, it allows us to use several variables to explain the variation in a single dependent variable. We often have not just one variable, but maybe even dozens or hundreds or possibly even thousands that we might choose from. We can isolate the effect of a specific independent variable and see how it changes the predictions of a dependent variable. This would be useful for us in particular if we want to hold one value constant and see how the rest of the model changes. All the concepts applied like they do in simple linear regression. We just need to do a little bit more work to get the values that we need for regression. So for example, let's take a look at a couple of variables. We have a data set here on falcons. So these are peregrine falcons, and we know we have the wingspan length measured in centimeters. We have the weight of the falcon in grams. We have the tail length in centimeters. And we have the sex, whether it's male or female. And so we have this information. We might be interested in knowing how these variables are all related to one another. Well, we have variation in weight that has nothing to do with wingspan. Uh, maybe genetically, some falcons tend to weigh more than others. Uh, we also have variation that's accounted for by both the relationship between wingspan and weight. And so as it turns out, if we looked at that variation, maybe they're correlated at a 95% level, or their correlation coefficient is 0.95. Well, on the other hand, we have variation wingspan that has nothing to do with weight. And so in this sense, there's still some variability that's not accounted for. That is to say, there's not a perfect relationship between falcon wingspan length and weight. And so let's keep on thinking about that concept and let's add another variable to the mix. Well, what if we now have tail length? That's a variable that we'll have in this Falcon data set. Uh, in addition to determining the variation accounted for by the relationship between the wingspan and the tail length, 
As it turns out, that comes out to be 73%. We also know the variation accounted for between the two independent variables, tail length and weight. And as we do and we look at that, that turns out to be 74%. We also have the variation accounted for by the relationship between the wingspan and what we might call the interaction between tail length and weight. And so that we might term, uh, or that value would be 94%. And so you can begin to see that as we think about how all of these variables are related to one another, we might be able to use multiple variables to better our prediction, uh, in this case, uh, for the falcons. So what we might be doing here uh, is we might select a random sample of n individuals uh, for p plus 1 variables. So then the least squares regression method chooses the values b0, b1, all the way up to bp to minimize the sum of squared deviations, where again we're looking at our formula for the multiple linear regression. And so these regression coefficients b1, b2, bp all reflect the unique association of each independent variable with the y variable or the response variable that we're interested in. So you can think about each of the values b1, b2, b3, up to bp as being different slopes. And we can think about them as being different slopes similar to what we might have in a simple linear regression.